So we want to get our acts together here. Give me one moment, folks. I'm trying to change the spotlight arrangement. And I'm having no luck. Let's see what we can do here. Here we go. Okay, so good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. It's such a spectacular day outside. So I commend all of you for attending this indoor virtual art at home class sponsored by the Hoboken Public Library. Um, much thanks to the library for supporting the arts during our time of pandemic and the arts have played such a crucial role and keeping us sane and whole and mentally and physically healthy. The arts will save us all. Our focus for the month of September has been Latinx and Latina and Latino American artists. The months of September and October are Latin American History Month in the United States. We are celebrating the contributions of many incredible Latin American artists to our overall culture. We have an artist today who is completely new to me and I am star struck, completely in love with her work. Her name is Maria Martinez Cañas. She was born in 1960, she is Cuban born, but grew up in Puerto Rico, moved to Miami when she was three months old, but then moved back to, or moved to Puerto Rico when she was only four. She then went to the Philadelphia College of Art where she received a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in photography in 1982 and then moved on to earn her Master of Fine Arts degree at the Art Institute of Chicago, where my son, I'm proud to say, went to school. She received a Fulbright Hayes Fellowship in 1985, which means she's incredibly intelligent, to photograph and do research in Spain relating to the discovery of Cuba by Christopher Columbus. She fell in love with Spain. She felt very comfortable and at home there. She's always felt more Cuban than Puerto Rican, interestingly enough. Um, but while she was in Spain, she began combining her love for graphic design with maps about Christopher Columbus's explorations and discovery of Cuba. So she combined her maps with her photography, with her drawings, and came up with these, I believe, extraordinary images and assemblage and collage that are about her cross-cultural upbringing and are about the difference between doors and windows, which I kind of find fascinating. And we're gonna talk about that briefly. I also have an interest, but between windows and mirrors. I think that they're similar, but very different. And this artist has made me think about windows and doors also very similar, but very different. 
So I find that something that I'm empathizing with and finding very interesting in her work. She also uses uh, a process with a wonderful kind of paper called photogram paper. I used to have photogram paper here. I've spent a good portion of my morning searching for photogram paper. I'm gonna put the word in the chat box for you all later because it's something you can purchase probably at the Dick Lick online store that you personally can use. Photogram paper is paper that's been tr treated with photosensitive chemicals. You can take it out into the sunlight. As soon as it's exposed to light, it will take a picture. And the fun way to use it is to lay it on the ground or a flat surface anywhere, a tabletop, and you put an object on top of the paper and then expose it to the light and it will print the image of the object and the object will appear as white on the, the paper. I have a dear friend uh, who is a brilliant artist and she uses photogram paper almost exclusively in her work and she creates really gorgeous imagery. I want to remind folks to mute, please. I think someone is still uh, on speaker, so thanks. If we ever meet in person again, I will try and get us some photogram paper so we can experiment with it uh, in person. It's great fun to use. You can cut it, you can collage with it. Uh, you can use it in a variety of ways. It's emulsified, so it's a little bit difficult to draw and paint on, but it can be done. You can scratch into the surface and then rub color into the surface. That's photograms. So she likes to use photogram paper with foliage and natural forms that she finds in her backyard. And then she incorporates that into her work as well. In 1988, she received a grant from the National Endowment for the Arts, very prestigious grant, not many people get it. And she's received many awards and her work can be found at uh, many museums, including the Los Angeles County Museum of Art, the Museum of Modern Art and the Whitney. So she's making quite a career for herself. Has anyone ever run into her before in your research? And do you have anything to add about her? I'm gonna put the word photogram in the chat box and her name. And then we're gonna start looking at her work. And just a note that tomorrow is Mexican Independence Day. Seems fitting to announce that when we are celebrating Latin American heritage. Jane, go ahead. Hi, Liz. Just a quick Hi. question about photogram paper. When you, you've placed an object on the paper and it it prevents the light from uh, reaching the page in that spot. How do you fix the um, Right, you paper. put it in water. Thank you. Immediately put it in water and get it out of the sun as quickly as you can. And it comes, the packet of photogram paper, if I'm recalling, it comes with directions, which is helpful. All right, let's find her work. I find her work exceptional. I hope you're gonna enjoy it too.
And I really relate to her as an artist who's delving into her multicultural heritage and trying to figure out where she fits in the world and doing it through visual means. I think that's extraordinary and exemplary. Kind of difficult to look at this one. Sorry, it's a little blurry, right? But you get a sense of the kind of work that she does. This is primarily photographs that she has cut up and glued down. But there are actual objects in the piece as well. So it is assemblage combined with collage. So these, see where I have the cross? These are real objects. I don't know the dimensions of this piece, sorry. And one thing I love about this image is it's not clear to me what's real and what's a photograph. I love that, that there's this kind of trompe l'oeil trick of the eye effect to her work. So most of this is very hard edge, geometric in nature, really interesting use of color. Look at this tiny bit of green here, completely unexpected. And yet it works. And then there's a little bit of greenish blue over here. And I love, of course, the touches of red really pull the composition together. It's kind of a circular composition, even though a lot of the red is in rectangular form. But the eye is drawn throughout the image because of the little bits of red. And then the yellow also directs our eye in this interesting diagonal attack. And for me, the focal point where she wants us to look first is this, the two circles here, the black overlaying the white for me, like my eye zooms right into that first because it's so strong. So again, your, your focal point, the main point of interest in your composition can be done with color or dark and light value. It can be done with big and little shapes. It can be done by putting the area of interest off center and kind of creating an interesting imbalance. There are many ways to get your viewer to look at a certain part of your image. Any comments on this particular piece? It's difficult to understand how this relates to her ethnic heritage. I wish we could see more of the detail in it. I'm guessing that some of the papers that she's used are from the maps that were referred to in her bio. I mean, maybe these kind of ruler-like things are cartographer map making tools, who knows? Certainly this could be related to the globe the earth and the moon. Navigators are reliant on the moon for finding their way over the oceans. No comment? Okay, we'll look at another. I'm not gonna look at too many pictures today because the project I want us to work on has many levels and layers.
I'm saving the best image, I think, till last. My fa I'm saving my favorite image till last. I'll be interested to see people's reaction. So this one is a mixture of photographic collage and also drawing and painting. I love the composition of it. Again, because it's digitized, it's so hard to see that it's mixed media, <clears throat> excuse me. The edges are blurry. The way she creates depth and the way the red circle seems to be transparent. It's very exciting to me. I like how she does stuff with the triangles. Gray tri triangle here. This is kind of a white triangle here. It's another gray triangle. There, there are many triangles in this piece. And yet the red circle dominates. I love how the circle is not a complete circle. This is a device artists frequently use to let the main shape run completely off the edge of the paper to create interest and excitement movement. It creates movement as well as the white and black lines create amazing movement in this image. And then boom, this is pure genius to me, this completely rigid straight line here. It's kind of like a womp. You could miss it initially, but there it is. It seems to me quite important to the success of this piece. Makes it into a pendulum. It's kind of like a pendulum, Nomi. Good morning, yes. Or an upside down lollipop. <laughs> or maybe it's Columbus and his kind of direct route to the Indies. Oops, ended up in the wrong place. Liz, did you say the red ball is the photograph and the rest is like painted? Not sure. Okay. Not sure. I do know it is a combination photo collage and painting. So it's mixed media piece. Looks like an x-ray. It does. That was Stephanie, right? Thank you. And good morning, Suzanne. Very simple colors, right? But very, very strong. It has a three-dimensional feel. Absolutely. The transparency. Yep. Her depth in this. Was that Dina? It is. Good morning. There's like a glowing effect on the left side where that big white. Yes, Stephanie, it's very, very powerful, that bright white light. Yeah. Still dominated for me by the red circle. Definitely. All right, here we go. This is the last image we're going to look at today. And it's my favorite. This one I have a title for. It's called Rebus Diversions, Untitled. Can you see the entire thing? It's quite huge. And in fact, I think it might be a wall size piece. So this, you can see now that this is definitely an installation, right? That there are real things attached. You can now see the maps 
they're kind of faint and indistinct. But there are maps or map like images in this one. A lot of wire. She seems to have a fascination with wire and uses it as line. It's kind of like she's drawing with the wire and is loving the shadows that the wire creates. A lot to look at in this one. I just, it looks like this is just an old piece of newsprint paper tacked to the wall. I love how it's raggedy. She just put some drawing pins, tacked it to the wall, and then did her work on top of it. The edges look like they're burnt. Yeah, maybe she deliberately aged it. And this is the way the image is shown on the internet. It's shown horizontally. Doesn't it feel like it should be vertical? Could be either way. Love it being uh, partially three dimension. It's not the whole thing, but there's spots of three dimension. Yeah, it's definitely three dimensional because she has used these real objects. I'm not sure what the heck this thing is over here, but I so love the shape of it and the negative shape it creates against the white paper. It appears to be wooden, but it may be plastic. But the way she's combined the 3D with the flat photos, it's just kind of extraordinary to me. And here she's taken flat paper and curved it and folded it to make it three-dimensional to project outwards. There's some, this is some kind of metal stick or pole here. And the wire is interplayed throughout the piece. There are little wooden, what appear to be wooden or plastic things that almost look like clay tools. How do you think she attaches it to the paper? I don't know, perhaps she threads the wire through. I, I definitely see things that look perhaps like little grommets. Do you all know what grommets are? You see the tiny circular thingies? Grommets are little plastic circles. If you're a camper person, if you've gone camping, grommets are the circular things in tents that you thread the rope to hold your tent together with. Where else have I seen grommets? Quilt makers frequently put grommets uh, through the top edge of their quilts so that they can thread a dowel stick through in order to hang it on the wall. So that could be how she does it. Tiny little grommet. And perhaps the wire isn't attached to the paper at all. It may be attached to something behind the paper. You know, the paper may be mounted on a harder surface, Suzanne. Like there may be foam, some kind of styrofoam behind here that she shoves the wire into to keep it in place. Mm -hmm. Or a kind of soft wood for her base. These are wonderful questions. <laughs> wonderful questions that I don't know the answer to. Those of you who have more time for research could maybe find out more for us.
if you've received any packaging material lately, that would be great to use in the project today. Like there's still, I know with larger items coming from Amazon, there's still styrofoam, unfortunately, in those boxes. You could use styrofoam in the project for today and you could shove items into that. So good question, Suzanne. It could be that she started with a clay, a flat clay base or even plasticine, something malleable and soft that she can shove the wires into. I, ha I don't know. I wish I did. Again, incredible use of color. This orange up here, wow. Very different. In one of these, it looks like there's a cat's face. Oh, that's interesting. You see it? Give me a minute. Where do you see a cat's face? Um, in one of the purple boxes on the right-hand side, he, right there, up, go up a little bit, that. Oh, in the middle, teeny tiny here. Yeah, could be. Let's see if well, I can eye, they're, they're like ears, and then there's an eye here, and a little nose, kind of. I just, to me, it looked like a cat. It looks now bigger, it's starting to look like a watch face to me. Yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. And now it's completely, I have no idea what it is. <laughs> so it can be whatever you like. Yeah, but you see the little ear kind of here? Uh-huh. That's what I'm saying. It can be whatever yeah. your heart desires. Right. And how much do we love the shadows? that the objects cast. I mean, look at this. Oh, that's it's fabulous. like a bird in flight. Magical. Look at this shaft oh, here you. and here. So these are things you can explore today in your own work. And I'm gonna explain how. Are we ready? No more thoughts? I love her work. I think it's inspired. All right, so I recommend that you follow her or look for her. She may have an Instagram account. I'm not sure. I haven't had time to check that out. Um, but I know she has a website. All right, so I uh, recommended, those of you who received my email, I recommended that you find an old shoe box or any small box that you may have around your home. Any old bits and pieces of stuff, bits of yarn, fabric, um, broken costume jewelry, broken old toys, buttons are a good thing to use for this. So take a minute to gather up objects like that. And first of all, a reminder, if you are gluing paper to paper, good old fashioned glue stick is all you need. If you are gluing three dimensional forms, either together or to a flat surface, you will need something heavier duty for your adhesive. So you will need some kind of wood glue, either Elmer's glue or this stuff that I got in the hardware store. Or if you're lucky enough to have a hot glue gun, that would work really well also. But as you saw in Maria Martinez Cañez's work, you can thread things together. So if you're lucky enough to have needle and thread, you wanna gather that up, 
with your supplies as well. You're probably gonna wanna have scissors, old magazines, old photographs that you're ready to get rid of. All of that is going to work for you. We are gonna make our own mini assemblage collage today. I want you to think as Maria has done in her work about your heritage, about your past, and think about how you can weave it into today's project. Put a little bit of that nostalgia thing into your work today. If you do not have any boxes, do it on a flat surface. That works too, either a piece of cardboard or a piece of paper. I'm gonna work on two different things. If you recall, this is an assemblage that I started for another artist. I forget who it was now, but I haven't gotten very far on it and I want to continue working on it. And I'm thinking about doing something with the lid from this box. I like the fact that this box is shallow and not too deep. There's a nice flat surface that I can do more with in this one. And I like the dark background. So those are the types of things that I invite you to look for around your home to use for the project today. Any questions? I think we have a lot of time today, yeah. As always, feel free to put stuff in the chat box. I will try and keep looking at the chat box. If you have any questions, ask at any time. I'll work on my stuff. Kind of boring to watch me. I want you to have fun doing your own thing, but if you think it's helpful to watch what I'm doing, feel free. All right, have fun everybody. As I always say, art on. Our class has grown too. We have a big group today. So welcome, welcome, welcome. And I hope you enjoy. Good news about working with my big box is I can clip it to my easel and it will be easier for you to see my process with the big box.
I'm plugging in my glue gun. That's why you're not seeing me. Realizing in order to glue things to my assemblage, I have to remove this. But from time to time, I'll put it back up so you can see what I'm up to. Oh, and a reminder, guys, to please mute.
So I just want to share one of the things that I love about this kind of work so much is that you discover things through the process that are so cool. Like I'm using wire because um, the artist inspired me to do that. But when I went looking for my wire cutters, I found that I have this red electrical tape. So I might use some of that. And I'm really excited about that tiny little discovery. And I love that part of this kind of work, the discovery part of the process. I hope you're finding some of that today too. You're having some of that happen.
everybody's doing well. Looks that way, nothing in the chat box. Awesome. So I've basically just been threading wire through the cardboard of my box. And I have a thing for buttons because they remind me of my childhood and many pleasurable hours of sifting through my mother's button box. So I'm now threading buttons on the wire. Loving it. So fun. I haven't used any photographs yet. We shall see.
sure you can even see what I've done, but I've added some things, making a little progress. about what to do inside the box now. Spent a lot of time on the outside. I've chosen a page from a magazine, not because of the image, but because of the color, which I like. quite well without glue, but I'm going to add some glue. This is paper to paper, so just going to use a regular old school glue stick. sure what to do next, which is pretty exciting. So when I'm stumped, I like to walk around my space and look at what I have and touch things and feel things, grab some things and experiment. And that's what I'm going to do now.
some old photos and some cotton. All kinds of possibilities. An old postcard from a show of mine. Why not use it in this piece? It's difficult for you to see the, what I have on the inside of the box, but with the old postcard on the inside, I'm loving how it looks. Cutting up an old photo from a show. I think I've mentioned this before, but working on Zoom where I can actually see a mirror image of what I'm doing. If you ever have the opportunity to do this, it's really helpful. <laughs> or work in front of a mirror, it's another option.
big. Now I'm using one of my favorite media, New York Times delivery bag. Just love the blue color. I also like that it's transparent. Rather challenging to cut under normal circumstances, but under a ceiling fan blowing it around, it's even more challenging, but fun.
I'm not sure if it even works, but that's okay. I even added a little piece of kinetic art to my piece. Blue plastic is blowing in the wind. <laughs> I really like it. I think it needs another one. And I'm using my doll shapes because that imagery definitely harks back to my past. And my personal muse of Hazel, my childhood doll.
that's too much. I'm going to do it anyway. Why not? You. As if this one is done. Now I'm going to think about my ladder box. And I need an object from downstairs. I shall return, everyone. Everybody's doing great, I think. Yes.
So I also keep a folder with ideas that I jot down and pictures that I collect over the years. And if you don't do that kind of thing, you might want to start doing it. And that's what I went to fetch. Talk about nostalgia. Oof. There's a lot of stuff in here. Endless possibilities. bunch of things out of my folder. And just a heads up, we have 15 minutes. Fifteen minutes of creative time. And Heidi wanted us to stop actually a little bit early today to talk about the future of in-person classes. So I don't want to forget that. Something in the chat. <laughs> You know, just fun pictures that I've collected over the years. One day I might want to use them, and this could be the day.
I hope people are going to share today. I'm really looking forward. This has been a very open ended creative process today. And sometimes that's the best. Sometimes it's not. Oh, and I realized we forgot to talk about the imagery of doors and windows. Maybe we can start an email conversation about that. I really, I love that. whole idea of entrance and exit, departure, welcome. Looking in and looking out. But we'll save it for another day. Now in the shower box, I'm starting with flat images first, which is completely the opposite way I did the deeper box. But 
That might be interesting to point out. And I'm finding it less fun. It's just kind of darn it. Things are starting to happen. My little kidney girl fell out. I'm not sure she fits. No one's looking, so that's good. Couple more minutes. You also want to share the artist for next week. her name in the chat box.
Oh, no, you're still there. All right, folks, so got to stop you there. Hate doing it as always. Um, I want to briefly mention for those of you who were not here earlier that Heidi brought up the possibility of meeting in person in October. If we meet in, person, I am committed to the idea of also continuing the Zoom classes for those of you who are not comfortable or who are unable to come in person. So it would be a hybrid. I so love the word hybrid. Here's some of the few pluses about COVID. Number one, the reintroduction of terrific vocabulary, like words like hybrid. Um, so she wanted to see basically a show of hands of those of you who might be interested in going back in person. And I do, I don't know if she's listening in at this point, I want to mention that Heidi will not have an assistant quite soon because Sharissa, of course, is going on maternity leave. So this would be a burden for her, although I did assure her that I'm happy to arrive early to set up for any in-person class. So that should not really be a huge problem for Heidi, but it is, it's an additional responsibility for her. All right, anybody want, I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about it. I prefer spending our last few minutes sharing work, but is there anyone who wants to share their thoughts on whether or not we should go hybrid starting in October? And some people I notice have left. Um, Okay, one person put their comment in the chat. Two people. And you don't have to reply to everyone. You could just reply to me if you'd like. Margo, what do you want to say? Go ahead. Unmute yourself, Margo. Where are you, kid? Here. Liz, did you get my comment? No, what's your comment? Um, hybrid. Okay. okay, I don't want you to think that the hybrid's going to be, you know, Martin Scorsese production ready. Um, it could be really, you could just be looking at open space. You might not be looking directly at Liz. You might not see her work. It might be sloppy when, when this is... This is a whole new world. I don't know how to. There'd know. be a learning curve. Yeah. Yes. I don't know how to film a class, you know? So it, it really will it, be. Well, and it may be that we would put the camera on a tripod and you would catch glimpses of me, but you would hear me. Yeah. Throughout the lesson. I, it's very similar to the way it is now. I mean, I would make sure in the introductory part of the lesson that you could see me. That would be fine with me. Okay. Yeah, so we don't meet in the small room. 
Heidi, can you save the chat box? Because many people are making comments in the chat box. I don't know how to save it. And they're only making it to you, so. Um, no, some people are making it to everyone. But I am, I'm, do you want me to write it down? I'm keeping mental note, but I can write it down. Yeah, no, I don't see a lot in, I'm not seeing a lot in the chat. Okay. And then, um, okay. I'll make a quick. Thanks, Liz. Liz, Please. you can take a screenshot of your, of your chat. How do I do that? Um, do. Well, I'm on my phone, so it's are yes, you. And five. I know how to do it on my phone. I don't know how to do yes, it. Yes, sorry. Same with me. Command Shift Five. Command Shift Five. Okay, I will try that. But who does the picture go to? Me. It goes to your desktop, and then you could send it in an email. Okay, I think it took a picture of me. Well, because you have to move the screen. It moves to wherever you want to take the picture. Of. You can move it with your mouse. Yeah, this is it. Command Shift 5. This is uh, physical gymnastics. Um, Liz, you could take a picture with your iPhone of the screen. Oh, oh yeah, I can just do that. That's a great idea. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Thank that's you. What they, that's what they that came for. <laughs> Susan, yeah, perfect. <laughs> Let's see if I can fill the whole, get capture the whole chat, though. Yeah, with just the comments about this. How many women does it take to figure out a technology question? Yeah, well, yeah. depends on how tech savvy you are. Yeah, I was going to say that. Yes, no, that was a joke. Well, yeah. <laughs> it takes one brilliant, one brilliant. <laughs> All right, thank you. So we, we got a lot of replies. Margo, you wanted to say something though, and I'm still waiting to hear from you. Maybe you're having audio problems. Can you unmute? Sounds like munchkins. Yeah, we can't we can't make it out. Can you put it in the chat box, Margo? All right. Well, let's get on with sharing. You can always email me with your thoughts on whether you want hybrid in person zoom only and all input is welcome there's no right or wrong answer on this this is just your opinion and it's not guaranteed you're going to get your way right it's entirely up to the hoboken library what they have okay. to do mm -hmm. and of mm -hmm. course they have concerns about our personal safety mm -hmm. okay margo I'm not seeing your response. Oh, okay, yes, I do see your response, so thank you. Sorry about your audio. That's very strange. <laughs> um, so I guess you can't share, unfortunately. Rima, are you interested in sharing? You're first in my queue today. You would have to go on camera also. If possible. Okay, thank you, Rima. We'll come back to you if possible. So, Pat, you're next. 
Would you like to share? All right, so um, give me a second. Okay. I there did something different because I'm not good at color, so I just paint something. Stop it. Please, <laughs> please guys, try not to start with negatives. <laughs> this is beautiful. Wow. Beautiful. Is it paint? It looks like you're using a little paper mache. Oh yeah, it's paint. It's, I was thinking if the cloud doesn't pop, I might add some texture on it. But the thing I got, uh, the paint I got is very dry. So it, it, it does. Mm -hmm. It's creating texture all on its own. Mm -hmm. What kind of paint is that? Thank you. Love it, Pat. Thank you, Lily. So you were asked what kind of paint you're using. Uh, it's acrylic paint from the library, but it's all getting dry, right. so I thought I should use them up. It looks great. <laughs> Thank awesome. you. Awesome. And are, is it going to stay flat like this, or are you going to add photographs? or? Uh, I don't know. know. I'm still working on it. I, OK, it's sure. evolving. Yes. Awesome. Thank great you. composition. Thank you, Pat. Susan, you're next. Okay, hold on. Just cutting something. Oh, All right. we might okay. come back to you. No, here we go. Wow, colorful. So here's your favorite symbol. So this is definitely a heritage piece for you. And I also used some old uh, art I cut up that I had done. That works, why not? Yeah. Yeah. Reduce, mm -hmm. reuse, recycle. Right. This is yeah. very reminiscent of our artist today, too. I, it has her feel to it. Huh, interesting. All <laughs> the verticals, the verticals interplaying with the more organic shapes. Mm -hmm. Loving it. Thank you. Nice it's color, fun. too. I had fun. Me, too. I had buckets of fun today. <laughs> buckets. Thank you, Susan. You're welcome. Lily, you're up, baby. OK. Wow, you're embroidering. Ooh. Oh, it's beautiful, Lily. Wow. Can you bring it up a bit? A little farther? Yeah, move it, move it back. Yes. Wow. It's gorgeous. Mm. Wow. Beautiful. It's gorgeous. Bravo. I want to see more. Thank you, Lily. Know me. And then Rima, I'm going to go back to you if you're ready. Well, that's great. Oh, wow. This is oh, awesome. Wow. Terrific. Toying you with my sewing box. Love. What, what is the object that you've attached? It's a top of a soda can. Oh, oh wow. Never oh. guessed. It's great composition. Great, great, great. The repetition of the lines, the kind of ladder thing happening. It's really awesome. And the overlapping is awesome. Yeah. Uh, paper weaving when I was a little girl. So I just Ooh, did wow. the paper weaving. Nice. Thank you. Very nice. Very successful. Thank you. Okay. I have to be conscious of, of the time, guys. I have a Zoom meeting at 12 noon today, very important with the Hoboken uh, Arts Advisory Committee. So, Rima, are you ready? Oh, your microphone. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry, Rima. So I'm actually, Heidi, is it okay if we can end? Of course. I'm, sorry. I'm of course. so sorry, everyone, but I'm, I'm meeting with the uh, designers of our resiliency park about a public art piece. I'm so excited. Ah, a public art piece that we're going to play. Hmm. Yeah, everybody hold up your work. Everybody hold up your work. 
so we can celebrate everything that everyone has done. Fab, love it. What a, what a great, a great class. This beautiful stuff. Wow. Really, really excellent job today. Wow. It was fun. Oh, I love Heather. I love it. Oh, Thank you, Liz. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Thank you for coming. I will see you next week for our artist. She is Brazilian American. You're going to love her work. I will send you all an email about her. Have a great Thank week. You. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks, Heidi. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks, Heidi. Thanks, Heidi. Bye, everyone. Gotta go.